Welcome to Love Your Family again and again and again and again, the podcast where we focus on parenting with love and clarity. I'm Dr. Marcy, a family culture expert who for over 20 years has been helping parents to create happy and strong families. I am here with Sarah, who I have known from her professional work as a gym owner that she rocks at. And now we're going to talk about her parenting, which she also rocks at. (laughs) So Sarah, welcome, welcome. I'm delighted to have you here today. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here with you. So first things first, tell us about your family. Sure. Yep. So my husband, Andres, and I have been together for more than half our life. Um, We met in college. Um did a long distance for a little bit and then moved in together. I felt like I was married pretty young. Um, I was married at 26, which nowadays feels very young. Um, I had my first baby at almost 30. Um, And so now I have a, um, Eliana is nine, Nora is seven, and Alden is three. Nice. <laughs> That's a good spread. I like the age difference across them, right? Yep. You, you have you have some variability there. It was in, it was yeah, it was intentional, I think. It was intentional to have some age difference there. Yes. Okay. Great. So with that, now my first question always is what is your family's go-to glitter? What is the thing that you do as a family that you know is going to be a good time? That's a good question. So it's a little challenging to answer because of the widespread of ages. Um, One of the challenges that we're always coming across is trying to find something that all of us can do. Um, I think the simplest answer was just be at home, right? We like our Saturday mornings, just everyone's in their pajamas hanging on their couch, and they're probably each doing their own thing. Maybe Alden's coloring, Ellie's on her switch, and Nora's just watching TV. But I think just hanging low is probably one of our favorite things. I love that. And what are you and your husband doing while the kids are, you know, switching and TV watching and coloring? (laughs) That's a good question. Um, He's probably cleaning the kitchen, and I'm probably drinking a hot cup of coffee. (laughs) I like that he's cleaning and you're having coffee. I like this. He's the cleaner in our relationship. He is. Yeah. Okay. Which it makes me wonder what you guys do to interact, right? Because this is each of you. I love that what you love to do at home is have an easy Saturday morning. Yep. Me too. If I can stay in my pajamas till noon, I am a happy camper. Yes. So I get the lack of planning, right? Life, it can be so busy, so many scheduled things, running here and running there. I love that you have these times when you're not going anywhere. But what I also hear in this is that you're each doing your own thing, which makes me wonder about the interaction. Yep. So what are the things that bring you together as opposed to just kind of enjoying being in the same space? So, I mean, we're actually pretty good about meals together. And I think that's when we really try and connect. We almost always have breakfast as a family of five and dinner as a family of five together pretty much almost every day. Amazing. Uh, Yeah, we I mean, this is one thing that I've actually worked really hard at just to kind of ensure that um, I don't know, I just like thrive on being connected. And I think just having I mean, sometimes breakfast is eight minutes long, right? Sometimes (laughs) it's 20. But um, yeah, I think the mealtime is kind of when we we connect and share. I love that. Because A, you have it every day and you have two touch points. So yeah, sometimes a touch point is longer than another. And I can imagine that your three-year-old is going to sit at the table for a lot shorter amount of time than your nine-year-old or than you and your husband. Yeah. And so that variability is part of it, but it is a, it is an engaged moment. And in my head, I am hoping there's no technology at the table. Never. Never. Yes. Winning with that. Yeah. Now, 
I will say there are some families that have technology at the table and it works for them and it's important, but because this is your moment of connectivity, I love that there is not technology there. Yes. I mean, we're big on technology. Like we are big on technology for sure, but this is like the meal is again, very protected in that sense. Well, and that's being a parent in 2023, right? Like there is this amazing gift that we have of technology. There are great ways to connect. There's information our kids can access. There's creativity and communication skills that they can learn through technology in so many ways that wasn't available before. Yes. There is also limitations to technology where it doesn't serve us and it keeps us separate and it has us thinking in a different way that our brains don't organically want. And therefore it shouldn't be our 24 seven, but having that balance and also being able to use technology when you need to cook the dinner so that your kids are engaged with something else. Those things are all fabulous. You right? know me it's- so well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> But it's that balance, right, of when does it serve us and when does it not? And I love that the moment that you know it doesn't serve you is mealtime and there's a clear rule because that clarity where everyone in your family knows, don't even ask, like it's not coming to the table, Yes, helps maintain that rule and that space where you all connect. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. All right. So I could sit and talk about how amazing you are as a parent and keep going down this (laughs) rabbit hole, which is super fun. (laughs) And usually there are some things that are tricky that we're here to talk about. So what's been happening lately or that you've been thinking about that you would love to discuss and get some tools around? Yeah. I mean, I think the, you know, first of all, I just want to say it's so funny because you're like how wonderful of a parent is, is that I don't feel like any parent really feels like they're truly wonderful parent. It's all, it's all challenging. Um, even though there's these glitter moments, as you say, but, um, so that's part of why I do that because when we're in it, especially when it's something that is hard and it's an ongoing hard, right. Parenting is, is you do it today and you do it tomorrow and you do it the next day and you're going to do it for every day for the rest of your life. Yes. So the hard moments are really easy to see because you have them every day. And so part of what I want to reflect to parents are those moments that you're just like, oh yeah, that's just what we do, that are actually what makes your kids amazing, what is helping you grow fabulous human beings that will be adult human beings on their own and independent. So my hope is that the moments when you can't remember that you're a good parent, you will hear in your head, oh yeah, when I talk to Dr. Marcy, she's a parenting expert and she said, I'm good at this. <laughs> Well, maybe I am and start to believe that you are doing a great job, even when it doesn't feel that way, because our feelings are, are not facts and we are often doing a better job than we are giving ourselves credit for. Yeah. But I think this is the battle, right? Is that it, it honestly feels like this never ending battle that me personally feels like I'm always losing, (laughs) right? Of just, it's the goal is to raise decent, resilient human beings in my head. Um, and then in, it just feels like we're going from moment to moment to moment. Um, you know, one thing we really struggle with is because of the significant gap in my, my kids' ages, it's incredibly hard to plan these activities that everyone likes to do, right? So I have Ellie's almost 10, Nora's almost eight, and they are um, incredibly close age-wise. They're 22 months apart. And then Alden's three. Um, the good news is that Alden thinks he's seven, which is <laughs> can be can be great in some stages, but he's just, right? I mean, he's just not. Like, he's he is almost four. He'll be four next month. Um, and I do think there's a big difference between a fresh three and a fresh four. And he's, again, becoming he his first day of school, preschool tomorrow. Um, but there's just finding things, even just finding TV shows, finding movies, right? Finding hiking trails, finding the du- right duration of a, an activity to go and explore, right? Um, it's just that part has been really challenging. So I actually, I hadn't really thought of our meals as like this connective piece. And I'm glad we are just even having this conversation because 
it feels like a lot of the time it's, you know, I just want to create these really great memories for my kids. And in my head, I'm just like constantly searching for the what's next, right? Like what, what should we be doing and what can we do um, together? Yeah, that's exhausting or it sounds exhausting to me. So as you were talking, there were a few things that I heard that, that got me thinking. One is that you feel like you're in a constant battle. And if we think about ourselves being in a constant battle, that is hard. And that means there's an enemy. And that means there's a winning and losing. And that is not how raising a family goes. That when it comes to raising a family, you're all on the same team. You all want the same goal. Like you and your husband both want to raise decent, resilient kids. Your kids want to grow up to be decent, resilient people. So you're you're all on the same team headed in the same direction. So, and you're not battling the world. So some of it is shifting this framework from it being a battle to it being life. Like, can it be... And I wish I had a really good analogy off the top of my head for this that I don't. Um, but can it be that this is, you know, it's a marathon, not a battle, or it's a, you know, something that is maybe it's a triathlon, right? Or or an Iron Man. It is something that is hard, that goes on for a really, really, really long time. But though you're all headed in the same direction, yeah. and the difference with that is when you get to the end of a marathon or an Iron Man, there is a sense of pride. And having never run a marathon or done an Ironman, I will say in my head, there is also mile markers that I expect people look at and go, oh yeah, five miles down, I'm doing all right. Okay, 10 miles down, we're moving like, uh uh-oh, I'm at 15 and like this is starting to feel icky, like how do I problem solve that? Or how do I push through it? How do I keep going? And if you think about your life of raising kids as a marathon, or an Iron Man since it lasts so long, as opposed to a battle, it might make it feel easier. Because yeah. then you'll also look for those mile markers of like, we did that. We're all still alive at age three. Okay, cool. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that would be the first thought that I had. The other is how do you figure out things that you can all do together? And that is really tricky. And thankfully, gratefully, you have two parents and three kids. And two of your kids are kind of close in age. So what I wonder is, are some of the activities that you're going to do together actually a divide, a, a start all together, but then a divide and conquer? Like, can you start on a hiking trail and after a half hour, one of the grownups takes your little one back to the playground that's down by the parking lot and the other parent keeps going for another half hour and then loops back? Yeah. Are there ways to start all together and then separate? Because what that will also teach is individualization, that idea of resilience of we all get what we need, which is not we all get the same thing, which is an amazing concept to teach your kids. And also that like this time we're going to watch the movie that is right for the three-year-old. Next time we're going to watch a 15-minute cartoon that's right for the three-year-old, then Mom's going to go play a game with him in the other room while you start the more grown up movie for the rest of you. So there's sort of everyone gets to pick what it is, or you play a board game that's more appropriate for your nine and seven year olds, but your three year olds on a team with one of the parents. Yeah. So that it's not this constant, oh my gosh, how do I do this? There's nothing that fits all of us, but how do I take this and make it fit us? How do we adapt? And it stinks when mom and dad have to go in different directions and you can't all be together as the five of you. But that's when you remember you have breakfast and dinner. Yeah. Because it's not always going to be all five of you doing the same thing because it doesn't always fit for all of you to do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting thought perspective of it of just I I guess I never really thought of I never really thought what it would be like to just kind of start all together and have again these moments together and then again even just shifting into like the resiliency of 
each kid gets what they want because we we do divide. Yeah. I think I think it's hard because a lot of the time, Andres and I feel like we we are dividing a lot, right? Because not only not only are we trying to figure out what's best as a unit, right? A family of five, but we're also trying to figure out what's best for each individual kid. And that's also really hard because they're all extremely different. Yep. And so some of it is about thinking about those at different times. We're going to spend Saturday morning as a family unit doing what we all need together to feel connected as a family. So we're all going to hang out in our pajamas in the living room, everyone doing their own thing. We're going to have a big family breakfast where we're going to make pancakes and you get chocolate chips and you get blueberries and you get bananas in yours and you get butter on yours and you get syrup on yours because everyone has different flavors. Yep. And then Saturday afternoon, we're going to get our individual needs met. So this one's going to have a play date and this one's going to go to soccer and this one's going to, you know, go hiking with mom and dad's going to actually get some lawn work done. And we do, we have different pockets of the weekend day to get different needs met so that you're not trying to do it all together at the same time, because that's exhausting. Yeah. If I'm trying to think of the needs of the whole and the needs of the individual and do it all at once and do it well, there it, it feels like an impossible task. But if I say, this is the moment for all of us, this is the moment for individual needs, this is the moment for parent needs, because there are also going to be moments where you're like, look, kids, you fend for yourself. I mean, don't actually leave them alone to fend for themselves, but like, you're all going to have time with grandma and grandpa, or you're all going to individual play dates, or we're getting a babysitter because mom and dad need time. Yeah. And that might be date night. That might be individual time, you know, but, or it might be, you need to go for a run and one of your kids goes with you. Yeah. But everyone gets to have their needs met, but don't try to do it all at once. Yeah. All the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah. Not all at once, all the time. Cause that's not, that doesn't work. Yes. It also, if we think about resilient kids, it also isn't realistic in the world. Yeah. In the world, I can't get everything I want every moment that I want it. Yeah. There are things that I have to do that I'd rather not, but I do them because I like the results that they bring to my life. And so teaching your kids that of, you know, dinner Monday night, mom gets to pick what it is. Dinner Tuesday night, you know, your nine-year-old gets to pick. Dinner Wednesday night, your seven-year-old gets to pick. Dinner Thursday night, your three-year-old gets to pick. And dinner Friday night, dad gets to pick. Do I really love the thing that dad wants for dinner? No. But is it good and healthy? Yep. So I'm going to eat it because that's what's for dinner. So we all get to have our voices heard. We all get to pick at some point or maybe pick within a limited variability because, you know, mac and cheese and pizza every night is not necessarily what we want our kids to be picking, but that's right. Right. Within a framework. But then we also get to celebrate that your need that you get to, you got to pick tonight. And isn't that exciting for you? Yeah. And I got to pick tonight. And isn't that exciting for me? So if you build in that variability, they also get to celebrate each other. Yep. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. I like it. The gears are turning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really hard to pull those pieces apart. Yeah. Because we want to do everything for our kids. Yeah. Yeah. I was saying everything feels so like intense in the moment, right? Um, All the time. Um, And I think that's the piece of just, you know, the marathon analogy of just, it's, you know, part of me is like, okay, well, we've already, we've almost made it 10 years. And that's also, that's feeling like we've done three marathons at this point. And maybe we have, right? Maybe, maybe that we have. You absolutely have. But it's also just like, again, I think this idea of it's not just one event, like it's just, we have so much more to go. And it's just, so interesting and I don't know it's I don't know no one you just think I mean parenting is so wonderful and literally the hardest job ever I've just Mm -hmm. everything's always changing the kids are always changing the environments are always changing and you are just trying to set them up the best way you can all the time 
Yes. While working and taking care of yourself. So that's mm-hmm. like a, <laughs> right. <laughs> It's, yep. it's just, it feels like a lot of the time it's like a time issue, right? Yeah. Now, if we go back to the marathon example, which again, fully admit I've never done this. So I'm making up what I think people do. There are moments in the marathon when you're running. There are moments in the marathon when you're walking. There are moments in the marathon when you're jogging. There are different speeds across the board. So If we take that into your life, it feels like every moment of every day is super important and totally critical. And it's not. Yeah. So unless someone is like bleeding and needs to go to the hospital or, you know, something of that caliber, you have time. And that doesn't mean that life doesn't keep unfolding, but you have time to like stop and take a breath and say, what do I want to do right now? There's so much parenting that is reactionary, that is automatic, that is responsive to what your kids need. And to do a really amazing job at it, what if you carved out time to make it intentional? To sit back and go, what do I want to make sure my kids get this week? What do I want us to focus on as a family this month? And maybe that's being polite to each other. Maybe that's eating good food. Maybe that's less technology if it's gotten out of hand because different times in our life require that. Maybe it's just asking each other how we're doing. And if you pick one thing a week or one thing a month that you intentionally cultivate in your kids as a action-based skill rather than a concept, right? I love talking about resiliency, but it's this big concept that kind of feels ethereal at times. So I want to teach them this skill that is part of resiliency. I want to teach them to celebrate other people. I want to teach them to do things they don't like doing. I want them to, to teach them to be proud of themselves after doing the hard thing, right? What are the resiliency skills you want to teach them and then go teach them one at a time? Yeah. But it's not that every moment has to be perfect or full or meaningful. Yeah. No, I think more of like the sense of like calm and agreeable, right? Like that, like that would be the goal, right? Like it's not necessarily happiness or, you know, I, I, I definitely, I wish I could give my kids absolutely everything they wanted, but it, it's just not, it's not physically possible, Um in so many layers, but I think, you know, one of the things that I've learned in my adult life is how reactive I am as a human being, right? I'm a highly emotional human being um, and was not given the right set of tools as in my own childhood. Um, And it took some professional mistakes and some relationship mistakes to kind of like really understand that and I've been in a lot of therapy um, and getting the right support and like really truly working on that for myself yeah and it is the hardest thing it is literally the hardest thing in the sense of you know I have I mean like parenting is reactive like you said right children are reactive so now I'm trying to take my reactive self in a reactive environment and I mean, I have to teach myself resiliency, right? At the same time. And this is the part that, you know, it's, you know, I say battles and maybe this just like, it's, it's mentally exhausting to always be thinking about everyone's emotional needs while also taking care of my own so that it's a long game and not a short game. Yes. Yes to all of that. And what if parent wasn't always responsive and what if it wasn't always reactive, but sometimes it was responsive, right? And the difference between those two things is reactive is something happens and you go like on a dime, you jump and do the thing that's happening, which is how most people parent. I was like, that's me. Yeah, that's you. That's exactly what's happening. But what if you're responsive? What if something happens and you stop and you say, okay, let me think about what I want to do now. Okay. And then act. So it gives you a five second window, a 10 second window to think and then move forward. Because sometimes when we just jump into action, we do great things. 
But sometimes when we jump into action, we perpetuate what's going on. And if we stop and we breathe and we go, how do I really want to navigate this? What is in all of our best interests? Well, I'm exhausted and I know I don't have the calmness in myself to actually be kind in helping in this moment. So instead, I'm going to suggest that they go find their dad. Right? But otherwise, you might just have jumped in, tried to help with something, got really frustrated and started yelling at them. Yeah. So if you take that moment for yourself, it lightens the load. It yeah. makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. And then if we take it a step further and you do a like Sunday night, what do I want to bring to the week and bring something good? And that is what you move from every day. You're like, okay, we're focusing on kindness. How can I be kind to you right now? How can I be kind to you right now? How can I be kind to you right now? And that kind of becomes your mantra, but also their mantra, right? Because when they show up and they're like, mom, I just need all the things right now in this very moment. You're like, whoo. How can you say that kindly? Oh, uh, 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 can I have some of the things now? Right? Like it forces them to pause as opposed to you reacting to their intensity. Yeah. And that's powerful teaching as a parent. And sometimes we have to think about, do we want to win in the short game? Right? Do we want to make everything okay right now? Or do we want to win in the long game? Meaning we're going to do something that's harder in this moment but makes life easier overall. Yeah. The one other thing that I think is really interesting as we've been talking is I come from a place where language is really powerful and the words we use give a lot of insight to how we feel and how we think about things. I wish I had counted, but I didn't. You say that this is the hardest thing many, many times. You think of parenting as the hardest thing. Yes. Which, you know, I I will fully support that it is a very hard thing. <laughs> yes. And if the main thing you think of when you think of being a parent is that this is fucking hard, then that's how it's always going to feel. Whereas if you start going, parenting is hard work, that's a step in an easier direction. If you say parenting is hard and amazing, if you say parenting requires resilience, like I just want to bring awareness to the fact that the story you are telling yourself about your parenting is that it is the hardest thing you've ever done and will ever do. Yeah. And I don't think that that's true. (laughs) And And I say that because you are so thoughtful, so aware And so wanting to do good by your kids, that there have been harder things that have been less in your control in your life. Definitely. But I also think it's like the endurance factor, right? Like it's like, it is hard work, right? And it does demand resilience. And I, I think it's just, again, how it's demanding, like it is demanding, Right. And sometimes I feel like I don't have enough to give. Right. We talked about time. Like, I just don't feel like there's enough time or even just general capacity between everything else that's going on in life. But I think in my head, it's just, it's just never ending. And I don't want it to be like, right. Like, that's, that is the goal. Right. But it's also just like, I don't think I've ever had to work this hard at something so challenging for so long and still have so much to go. Yes. So I love how articulate you are about that and how that <laughs> ha- and how that feels and all of that is very true. And what if it didn't have to occupy every single moment of every single day of every single ounce of your being. What if you carved out space in your life where you said, this is mine. This is not where I'm a parent. This is not where I'm a business owner. This is not where I'm a wife. But for this hour, twice a week, 
I'm just Sarah and I get to take care of me. And in these 20 hours of the week, I'm a mom. But in these four hours, I'm only a business owner and my kids are either with my husband, with another trusted adult, at school where they're being taken care of. Now, yes, is there the reality that sometimes that time gets interrupted? Sure. But that happens with everything else, right? That happens with your business. That happens with, you know, your friends where you don't expect them to call and need something, but they do. Yeah. And so I wonder if you have to carve out moments where you're like, this is not my mom moment. This is my working moment. This is my human moment where I just get to be Sarah and whatever that means for you, right? So when I have just Marcy moments, that sometimes means I'm going to a yoga class or I'm going to meditate or I'm going to go to a park and put my feet in the grass and stare at a tree and do absolutely nothing because I just can't. Because those are the things that refill me. Yeah. I wonder if you need spaces of that. And also to look at there are other things in your life that you have had a longer relationship that maybe doesn't feel as hard because you're not raising another human, but you've been married. You've been in this relationship half of your life with your husband. Yeah, That's longer than your parenting. And yeah. hopefully that will stay just as long. Yeah. Right. Your relationship with your health, right. Our, our intention of exercising and eating good food and taking care of ourselves is a relationship we have from the moment we learn that we can make decisions to make ourselves stronger and healthier and better. Our relationship with our careers, while it may change, or unless we are part of a very elite group, we are going to work for our entire life. Yeah. So you have this story that it is this longest, hardest relationship. And maybe it really is. Maybe your kids are going to be the longest, hardest thing. But there are lots of other things that in- require the same amount of endurance that don't have the same heaviness that I'm hearing you talk about this. And part of it is not to take away the importance of this role, but to bring in levity to it, to bring in the joy, to bring in the moments where you go, oh my gosh, we did it. We went for a hike, all five of us, and it was freaking amazing. We, we did, as a family, we win right now. Yeah. And the more moments that you can look at that and say, oh, that was an awesome dinner. Everybody actually liked it. That winning, we as a family are winning. Not I'm winning over them, but like we are winning. Yeah. Maybe it's not about recognizing the other things that require just as much endurance. Maybe it's about bringing in more of the joy. Yeah, no, for sure. I think this is like the piece of, I mean, this is what I've been, this is what I've been working towards, right? Is at the end of the day, I need, I need these more, right? Joy is my success, right? Like I need more successful moments to feel, I don't know, I was going to say less, you know, less of the brunt of the work, but it's also just feeling like we're at least moving in the right direction, right? And so And again, this is like, again, maybe going full circle, but it's just, it's always feeling so challenging trying to give us total, you know, unit of five, these successful moments that that is challenging, 100%. We've gotten a lot better with, you know, dividing and having like more individual moments because we find more success there. Um, But it's also, I don't know, I just... It's, it's finding, I hear about the time for me too. I just, it's like, it's always on my mind, you know? And like, maybe this, I mean, you, as soon as you were talking about the, you know, doing something where you're not a parent, I was like, oh, that's my gym. That's easy. And then you're like, not as a gym owner. And I'm like, oh man, okay, fine. But this is like, this is why I work, right? Is that at the end of the day, there is other things that fill my cup and, um, you know, as a gym owner, I do strength and conditioning. I love really hard things. I'm training for an epic hike in the Grand Canyon. And like, that has been my, my time, right? That's who I am as Sarah, but I'm also training for an epic hike and it's physically exhausting, right? So it's like this fine balance of, 
it feels that much harder to find and carve out that time for me, which my husband is and my children are all incredibly like they know me, they right? They like they're all incredibly supportive. Um, and we make it work, but it's it's just I don't know, the the mental load of all of this is something that weighs on me every day, right? Of how and I, maybe it's just again my emotional being and who I am in the sense of um everything feels intense for me, right? And it's like my three-year-old crying over his potatoes being too hot, like (laughs) it takes energy away from me, right? Or Mm -hmm. my daughter yelling because she doesn't want to brush her teeth, which is just like, again, it's a non-negotiable, just brush your teeth. And it's like these little fights that either are consistently happening or just feel useless. Maybe it's those moments where again you and I have been working together for a little bit in um our business group and it's just these mantras of this is not a crisis has been incredibly helpful again of that like general pause that you've been saying um to kind of take to make sure that it's it's less reactive because I mean I just I naturally want to scream back that's my reaction right is that I, I I'm literally working so hard um and maybe gratitude is something that I would love to work on my kids that they can actually like, you just think you're going to raise these human beings and put so much intention into it. And they're just going to be like, you know what, mom, thanks for showing up for me today. But that does that, that rarely, rarely happens. Yeah. Um, And that part again, and then my head goes to like, Oh, should I be modeling different behavior? Right? Like my head spirals in different ways. And it's just like how, how to endure the endurance, right? Like how to, to get through it. It's just, it's always changing. Yeah. It's always hard. It's always hard work, right? Yes. So I think your model in life of who you are is to do hard things. So -hmm. when you say this is the hardest thing I've had to do, that's just a reflection, I think, of how important it is to you. Absolutely. Because you go from hard thing to hard thing to hard thing. Yes. So... (laughs) I keep, I hear that word differently, which is why I keep wanting to lighten that. But maybe the fact that it's the hardest thing you've ever done really is that it's the most important, in my language, I would say it's the most important thing you've ever done. Yes. Which is awesome. So in what you just said, there are a couple of things that it made me think of. One is maybe you just need to say some of those mantras out loud so that when your kiddo is screaming because she doesn't want to brush her teeth. You go, this is not a crisis. Brushing your teeth is not negotiable. Please just do it. So that it's not the like logical, I have to convince you every time, but I'm going to tell you the thoughts that are in my head because part of what makes that exhausting is the emotionality coming out of another human being. And some of it is that you are doing gymnastics in your head to try to figure out what do I say to this child to get them to stop screaming. And then brush your teeth. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. And maybe it's really saying the things that are actually just in your head of this is not a crisis. Brushing your teeth is not negotiable. Put toothpaste on your brush. Right. I'm a big fan of action based directions. Put the toothpaste on your brush. Just one step. You can do this. Yep. And which helps us get out of the negotiation of it. The other thing that I wonder if joy is for you, the definition of success and thinking about you training for this epic hike. I wonder if you are used to doing hard things in chunks where there is a finish line, right? You're training really hard. It is exhausting. And and at some point you're going to go do this hike and be like, I did that thing over there. Look, I accomplished it. Maybe you need to create chunks of parenting. Maybe it's we need to get from the beginning of the school year to holiday break. I can do that. And then we win, right? (laughs) Just like your epic hike, you're going to be like, I win. And then we need to get from the new year to spring break. And then we win. And in between because I'm thinking of how you train for an epic hike into the Grand Canyon. There's a plan. There are success marks, right? Where you're like, I need to be able to walk this long at this speed, holding this weight, but you don't. And then you can be like, I did that. Check the box. I succeeded. 
But in parenting, there is no checkbox. There's not like, my kids went to bed tonight. Hooray. They ate healthy food today. Yes. All the homework in my house was done tonight. We win. But what would it be like if you started creating some of those measures for yourself so that you can see the success, right? I call it joy. You call it success so that you can measure your success as a parent. Because if your model in who you are as a person is that you do hard things and that's how you get through and that's how you feel successful, cool. But you also usually are using a measurement and a plan, right? If I think of weight training, it's like when you go up in weight that you're lifting, when you start doing more reps, when you can stay in the gym longer. I don't know the actual measurements because I don't do that stuff yet. You'll (laughs) teach me about that later. But maybe you just need to create some markers of in any given day, how do I look for success as a parent? In any given week, how do I measure the success? And over time, where are my markers of winning? Yeah. I mean, uh, it's it's so interesting because I do, like, I, I think I, I know how I am when it comes to the finish line, right, of that mentality. And that's why this feels incredibly hard because the finish line, I mean, in my head, it's like, okay, the first, the first finish line is when you know, Eliana turns 18. But is that really like, that's probably the hardest point of like, that's just when everything gets really hard. Um, from what I understand from some of my friends. So I mean, I think having, I mean, even just like the school year, getting through the school year successfully is is a long event as well. Um, and so maybe again, it's just, I like the I like the breaking it up into to smaller chunks. Yeah. It's just so interesting because I think like I, I know how I am and I know how I think, but I didn't think I thought about this like that. And that maybe just aligning you, them a little bit. I do. I mean, I guess so, right? Like maybe I guess the so. way we do anything is the way we do everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, I don't know, part of me just wished I didn't like doing hard things. But I love um, that you like doing hard things. Yeah, I don't know. I think that that is a huge asset that more people need to know how to do and enjoy. Because I think that's where accomplishment comes from. I think that's where satisfaction comes from. I think that's where pride comes from. We grow by doing hard things. Yeah. I think, I mean, and we can, (laughs) part of the reason why I am how I am is because I had to go through a really hard thing with my family when I was a teenager. Um, And it was honestly, I mean, truly the hardest thing I ever had to do. Um, And I think at the end of the day, that has kind of shaped why family is so important to me, as well as um, like trying to figure out how far, how much into the story I should go. But um, I mean, when I was just in college, my brother was having a few really awful episodes and very long story short, 10 years later, he was diagnosed with bipolar. And so, I don't know, a lot of it is just, you know, challenged my idea of family and challenged my idea of relationships and, you know, loyalty, right? Um, And I think, you know, it's just probably why I put so much emphasis on family. I'm also, because of all those events, I think a highly anxious, sensitive, emotional human being, um, which is why, how I found strength training. Actually, it's why I do what I do. Um, I fell in love with it. It was the first time that um, my body felt really capable, right? And so it's like, you talk about these short successes, like that is strength training, like to its, right? finest but I think you know I I don't know I just felt I just felt like I had to share that because it's only fair to your listeners to know that like right like people do hard things yes but like I was forced into this situation we didn't ask for it in the sense um my brother wasn't yet it's not what he probably would want either um but it's been a really challenging road and I think that 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 is how I've become who I am. And I think I just don't want that for my kids, right? This is why resiliency 
is so important because I had to get through it without so many tools. Um, and I just want to make sure that they, they know they can get through hard things too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so first I want to say thank you for sharing really openly something that's really personal. I also think sometimes the hardest thing we go through becomes our biggest gift. And that is some of what I'm hearing is that this really hard thing that you had to go through as a kid has shaped who you are in this really beautiful way. Like you are a really thoughtful parent. You are a really hardworking person. You are intentional with how you go through life in accomplishing goals. There's really beautiful gifts that came from that really hard experience. And my belief is that we get to choose as adults now how we want to bring those stories forward because you're not still in that moment and you're not still in that crisis and you don't have to do hard things all the time anymore. And this, of course, is a much harder thing to unpack than just simply saying, oh, yeah, I'm good now. I don't have to do that. Yeah. But there's a piece of me that wonders how you get permission to not do a hard thing. Where, where is the space that opens up in your life to let it be easy at times? And that that might be something to explore with your therapist. That might be something you already have explored. But our families, our parents do the best they can in raising us. And then we do the best we can in raising our kids. And then they take those tools and have agency about who they become. So the goal is to give our kids the best tools possible while also taking care of ourselves. So I want you to remember that you are doing this differently for your kids to the best that you can. Because my guess is that it was an unexpected circumstance that led to what happened in your life. And to remember, there will be unexpected circumstances for your kids, for your family. But that because you are who you are, because you know you can do hard things, because you have taught your kids that they can do hard things, they will be able to get through to the other side of whatever is going to happen. Even if they don't have those particular tools, because you will be there to support them through it. And together you will find whatever the tools are that you all need. Right. And that's really what resiliency is about. It's not having every tool in your toolkit. It's about knowing where to find new tools when you need them. Yeah. And so part of what I wonder about for you is giving yourself credit for the hard thing that you went through with your brother, that you see how strong you were to come out the other side and decide to have this amazing family that you are building and then give yourself credit for the successes you have every step of the way with your kids, because you are doing so much better than you think you are. I'm just like crying over here on this other side. <laughs> I'm good oh, with God. that. <laughs> I, just, are I don't know. It's just, you know, I've, I just wanted to say thanks. Cause I just, you know, I've been in a lot of therapy for a lot of years and I just, I've never, ever thought about what happened as a gift, you know? And when you said that, it just, I don't know. It's a whole nother perspective. It's just perspective, right? I've just yeah. never, ever thought of it that way of, you know, it was life changing. It's really hard. Um, it did make me who I am, but you always, because it was a not positive process, you always focus on the not positive things. Yeah. So it's just, um, it's just a perspective I'm trying to take in. Yeah. You know? So we're going to wrap so you can sit and take that in <laughs> and breathe that in. And, and I, I do from this conversation and the way you explained it, I think it's why you have built the family you've built and why you have the intentionality and the significance in your parenting that you do. And I think that's a huge gift. 
I think that's a huge gift. So I usually end, and you can choose to answer this or not, depending on how you're feeling right now. I usually end asking my guest, you, what is your one golden nugget, your one big takeaway? And if you want to answer that, great. If you need to sit with where you're at, I'll answer it. (laughs) Well, I want to hear yours after mine, honestly. I feel like I've been, I think the biggest thing is just the shift in perspective, right? And this is what it is, is that your story is so close to you. And then you tell yourself what it is and how it is. And then, you know, you talk to a professional about it and it's a whole nother level of what they think it is. And I just... I don't know. Again, I'm always focusing on the hard because that's what I do. But hearing, you know, the big, the biggest takeaway is all the positive, right? Is that we are having joyful moments. We are having connective time together. We do have options of figuring out plans as a family of five, even if it's together for a little bit and then split. Um, And that again, I mean, intentionality is always present for me, but like, thinking of that as a positive thing versus a piece of hard work is it's a good shift for me. Yeah. That's awesome. I love your takeaway. (laughs) So because you ask, I'll tell you my, I have two golden nuggets, one for you, one for me. My golden nugget for you would have been setting the mile marker success marks Yeah, that you are you are doing all of these amazing things and not seeing any of of it as you run by cuz you just you're still in the marathon of it and that is what parenting is you do just keep going but when we stop and say ah we accomplished that goal yay us it feels different inside yeah. and so that that would have been my golden nugget for you but my golden nugget for me is also remembering the power of language and that how one person defines a word is not how another person does. So, cause I kept hearing you say, this is the hardest thing. This is the hardest thing. And I was like, we need to stop thinking that this is so hard. Like, yes, parenting is hard, but like, that should not be your main definition, except that is how you translate importance. So yes, it should be the hardest thing you do because it is so important and close to your heart. And that's the perfect word for you even though I would have languaged it different. Yes. And so that's my golden nugget to take away because I always learn so much from these conversations too. So Sarah, thank you so much for all that you shared for this beautiful conversation and all of the spaces that it evolved into. I am, I am really grateful for how you approached this conversation and shared with me. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here as a guest and for being who you are as a human. Oh, thank you. I'm very grateful for you. All right. And thank you for listening. I know your time is precious and limited. I'm grateful that you shared it with us today. What's your one takeaway? Just one small step can make a big difference. Make sure you know when new episodes come out by subscribing here and joining my mailing list at drmarcy.com backslash podcast. Do you want to be a guest on a future episode of Love Your Family again and again and again and again? Then go to drmarcy.com backslash podcast guest and let me know. Finally, do you need individualized help for your family? Then go to drmarcy.com backslash contact and connect with my team to learn how we can help you. Remember, blue skies are ahead and we're going to get there together.